Dear students, today we would be learning about new towns, counter magnet towns and satellite towns. Let us start with the new towns. New towns, what are new towns? If you see the definition, I'll quote. Oxford Dictionary says, new towns are planned urban center created in an undeveloped or rural area, especially with government sponsorship. Basically, it is about greenfield development. Uh, Raquel Insasiridza of University of Barcelona said that the idea of new towns had begun in Europe, specifically in the United Kingdom, and afterwards in France and United States, following more or less the direction of E. Howard in his book Garden Cities of Tomorrow. Now, what was the need of new towns? The New Towns Act of 1946, swayed by the need for post-war reconstruction, more, there was a need for more housing and there was a call to halt any further expansion of London's girth. Authorities saw that there was no alternative but a new town solution. And therefore, 27 new towns were built after 1946 outside London. You can see from this map the new towns, the location of the new towns. Now, new towns in India, uh, what was the, how it was it defined? K. C. Shivaramakrishnan said that internationally, most of these new cities were conceptualized to reduce the pressure on the parent city. But one of the most frequent reasons for wanting new towns, as I have said, is that they will be planned internationally. Uh, the new the reason why Newtown came up was the war, post-war reconstruction. But in the case of India, it was not so. In the case of India, we had pre-independence uh, new towns that was predominantly railway towns, consisting of railway colonies along railway lines and industrial towns, that is Kharagpur or Asansol. Post-independence, we have new towns which accommodated the resettlement colonies that is Faridabad, Gandhidham, Ashoknagar, etc. There were model towns or planned towns also as extensions to existing cities that is there were various industrial towns also. Now if we try to classify the new towns in our country we see that we have new towns which are uh, which have economic self-containment that is industrial towns or port towns or towns which are uh, related to the dams which have come up because of the dams or where which has railway workshops that is Rorkela, Bhilai, uh, Durgapur, Bokaro Steel City, Noida, they were all industrial towns and then we have Paradeep which is a port town. Chitaranjan in West Bengal, which is a railway workshop, locomotive workshop, Nangal, which has basically came up because of the dam. Now, new towns have also come up as suburbs or as expansion to the city. For example, Bhuli in Sindri, then Indian Telephone Industries Township near Bengaluru, then Dwarka in Del Delhi, then Jagannath Nagar near Rachi. Cyber city in Hyderabad, and also we see that new towns are planned townships, also, for example, and which are planned capitals like Bhuvaneshwar in Orissa, Chandigarh, Naya Raipur, Amravati, Gift City. Of course, all of them are not capital cities, but Bhuvaneshwar, um, Chandigarh, Naya Raipur, Amravati. Uh, and also we have new, new towns which are not capitals, for example, Gift City, but they are greenfield development. As you can see from this map, they are locations. When we come to these case studies, we see that among the pre-independence new towns, Kharagpur was one of the towns which was set up as a railway town in the year 1898. Today it has a population, uh, or as per 2011, the population of Kharagpur 
is nearly three lakhs, and the area is about 128 square kilometers. The town of Kharagpur was set up in the Medinipur district in West Bengal. It got the the introduction of the railway line was responsible for the urbanization of Kharagpur from uh, its rural setting to becoming a town. Bengal Nagpur Railway or BNR, a private limited company, acquired about 3,500 bighas or about 562 hectares of land in the for the establishment of the railway terminal and the reason of Karapur being set up was that there was no cheap unproductive vacant land in in and around Medinipur town and thus with the availability of vast stretches of not so agriculturally productive lands uh, in Karapur made it a suitable place for developing a railway terminal and with it a township that was Kharagpur township. The railway terminal was established because of the necessity of direct rail linkages of Calcutta with the rest of the country and um, rest of the country. So Kharagpur, the rail, uh, thus the rail, uh, with the railway terminal the railway town of Kharagpur was planned with residential quarters, dispensaries, educational and, recre and recreational centers and shopping facilities. The railway authorities felt the necessity of a large servicing unit for the very large number of local and through passenger trains as well as goods trains which resulted in a workshop being set up in 1904 covering about 6.1 square kilometer of land in the western part of the town. Indian Institute of Technology, one of the earlier IITs, was set up in Kharagpur on an area of about 500 hectares and is located 5 kilometers away from the railway station. This was followed by the local self-government department of West Bengal formed the municipality of Kharagpur in 1954. Now we come to Nairayapur. Nairayapur in Chhattisgarh, which is which was planned in the year 2008 with a population of 4.5 lakhs and an area of 23,742 hectares. As you can see from the map, there is planning layer 1 there is a city with a green belt, then there is a peripheral zone that is layer 2 which is a predominantly rural area with ancillary facilities, then there is layer 3 which is airport zone and all this is the city was planned by Nair Airport Development Authority. The city was planned as a satellite city to Raipur holding capital functions and the it was basically grid iron pattern developed on a grid iron pattern along with transit oriented development. There were 40 sectors and 21 sectors were residential sectors, were planned as residential sectors. And the city's urban fabric was regulated through the development control regulations and urban design guidelines. You can see from the map how the city was planned as a grid iron pattern and the, how users were located. For example, CBD and the office complex were located at the center of the city to avoid long trips. There were three big lakes which were planned for recreation. There were guard, evenly distributed gardens and playgrounds. And as I said earlier, that Nairayapur was a greenfield city along with the other capital cities. 27% of the land was solely devoted to greenery and therefore it or it qualified it to become the first um, green field smart city in our country. Bhuvaneshwar actually was the administrative 
it was the administrative town because it was the capital uh, of the state. So it was planned in the year 1948 for a population of 40,000. And the area was about uh, 1,684 at that time, I mean, uh, less than 1,700 uh, hectares. And it was planned by Dr. Otto H. Konisberger. You can see his photograph here. His, um, uh, he was Konisberger, who uh, was a German architect and an urban planner. And he was winner of the Schinkel Prize. Then he was recipient of the UN Habitat Scroll of Honor. So he was a very eminent and respected um, uh, architect and planner who designed Bhuvanesha. What was the location of Bhuvanesha? You can see here the, there are these forests on one side, the, the rivers, and the land was to a, was. Um, sloping towards the east, from west to east. So the location is that it was on a fertile delta on one side and hilly forest on another. The railway line divided the city in two paths and uh, the ground sloped from, as I said, sloped from west to east. So that was the setting of uh, Bhuvanesha. Of now uh, we see that um, the principles, what were the principles of planning or, or what was used in uh, the concept which was used to plan was that uh, the neighborhood principle. And therefore, if you see this drawing, it shows that uh, it was planned as a, in a linear fashion, the linear pattern with the central artery uh, forming the main spine and all the neighborhood units were attached. So there were six units each with a unique character and designed for a population of 5,000 to 6,000. So that was the uh, concept. Now there were these regular blocks which are divided into within a unit, within uh, this, uh, as I said, there were six units. So within each unit, there was this regular blocks which was divided into uniform plots and uh, there were straight streets uh, intersecting at right angles, it's a sort of a, and each unit had seven types of roads and um, there were broad avenues with in situ provisions for storm water drains, overhead electric lines, telephone lines, water supply network and the need of adequate light and air to the adjoining houses. And um, the number one, if you see number one, was the arterial road that was about 200 feet. Number two, that's a uh, next level in the hierarchy. Uh, it was uh, the major unit road, which was about 150 feet. The third was the major housing street, which was about 100 feet. And number four was minor housing street, which is 40 feet. Then number five was the cycle paths. Then there were parkways. And number seven is the footpaths. So this is the road hierarchy which was maintained or which was planned for the city. Now um, we come to the um, next case study, which is Dwarka, uh, which, was, um, which is in New Delhi. And Dwarka was uh, planned as a subsidy in the year 2004 for a population of 10 lakhs and uh, with an area of 5,648 uh, hectares in the southwest part of Delhi. It was planned by Delhi Development Authority uh, with a team of eminent experts, academicians um, from various disciplines. And um, you can see in this uh, image uh, the development of Dwarka and uh, the location, as I said, it was in the southwest part of Delhi. Uh, and uh, now we come to the salient features of the plan. The plan was, uh, uh, had 29 sectors and uh, there was a typical residential sector layout, which is uh, from about uh, a square of 900 by 900 and uh, that is an, with an area of about 81 hectares. The uh, characteristics of this uh, 
of this uh, township of this subsidy was uh, basically these uh, sectors were self con contained and uh, was planned to be self contained and uh, designed for a population of 30000 for each uh, sector and it uh, these sectors were bounded on all roads uh, on sorry on all sides by arterial roads and uh, there was network of cycle tracks pedestrian paths uh, which had been proposed within each sector and which link the housing clusters and their facilities within each sector from this drawing you can see um, the the arterial roads uh, and then there are feeder roads which uh, connect uh, these arterial roads um, which connect these sectors to the surrounding areas the commercial areas are all planned along the major spine where the MRTS is also planned so it is uh, sort of it is um, uh, an example of a transit oriented development uh, and um, where um, the commercial spine is connected to the different sectors um, uh, and um, with uh, the arterial roads which are the major bus routes so um, that's how the entire um, city is um, is uh, covered by public transport as far as possible covered by public transport and about 20 percent of the subsidy area uh, of Dwarka has been planned for the development of green areas as has been as we can see in this um, drawing coming to another case study that is Noeda new Okla industrial development authority area which is in Uttar Pradesh we find that it was Noeda was also an industrial town uh, it was planned in 1976 with a population of 5 lakh and an area of 3360 and it was planned by the new Okla industrial development authority and you can see from this drawing the land use map of the Noida uh, township there are in there is an industrial area the and then also residential component is there so it was formally this township was formerly part of the Yamuna river basin and had been reclaimed by constructing embankments along the river the city is triangular and rivers Yamuna and Hindan form natural barriers and the national highway the man-made barrier River fronts exclusively has been used for major regional and city level recreational facilities and it is planned on a grid iron pattern dividing the city into various sectors and it was also planned as self-contained integrated township. The city had a predominantly uh, was planned with the city was planned with a predominantly road based circulation with the major roads running from southwest to northeast and the low intensity activities were planned in the southern ex extension in the area between the expressway and the river Hindal and the education research institutions and the office areas have been planned along the expressway the commercial centers are proposed on the junction of major arterial roads and also along them there were there have been or interflowing green areas have been provided which runs linearly in a north-south direction more or less centrally through the city though new towns as we see that has been planned with a specific purpose and they were um, planned with uh, uh, there were new concepts could have been applied to the new towns and um, but still we feel see that there are many challenges which are associated with the new towns in terms of the time which it took to build the towns as due to the slow process of land acquisition and new towns required increased capital expenditure in terms of land acquisition land development infrastructure development and the amenities which were originally provided were designed for larger population and reflected the government's intention 
to create fully equipped new com communities from the outset. However, initial operational difficulties existed. So we see that the new towns had the challenges uh, while developing these towns.